KTV. When I was asked to get up and, and say something about Bradley, I didn't really have to think a long time about, about what I would say. I already knew immediately what I was going to say. And I want to talk about the very first time I met Bradley. <clears throat> when I met him, he was, I think he's three years old, four, I, I, think, I think he was three, but he could talk really good. And I had a place here in town, and um, we were all kind of together just one afternoon, just uh, spending time with each other. And, and April had <laughs> had Brad and the kids over, and um, Shannon was there with us, and you know we just had our kids we were just hanging out. <laughs> and I didn't know he was there. Now, granted, I never met him yet. I knew, I knew that April had kids, but I never met them. <laughs> and so I had, I had come in and just like I'd, I'd taken my shoes off and I, I had um, gone to the kitchen to grab a jar of peanuts. I was going to just have me just you know, some peanuts. <laughs> and here come this little old butter ball around the back side of the couch. I would say butterball. I mean, like he was, he was three. That joke was built like he was ten. He wasn't. He he wasn't just fat. He was a solid boy at three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, he was solid. <laughs> well, I was talking um, to several people before we left, and his, that smile. Bradley has. Um, Bill, I don't know where it comes from. But when he smiled at you, and he meant it, couldn't see his eyes. You couldn't see his eyes. That was, that was okay. But he'd come walking around that couch. I couldn't see his eyes. But I know he could see me. Well, he had my shoes on. And he come walking around, and, I, and like I said, I didn't know he was there, and I just kind of, it caught me off guard, and I just looked at him. I knew he was, I knew, that's, that's got to be April's boy, that's got to be him. Because they were all just, you know, just doing our own, whatever, whatever. <laughs> he looked at me and said, man, now I'm probably not going to get this right, but I'm going to try. He said, man. I said, yeah, I got your shoes on. <laughs> I said, what? He said, I got your shoes on. I said, yeah, you, yeah, you sure do. Yes, you sure do. Do they fit good? Mm-hmm. A few minutes goes by, he just walks around, and then, you know, just he just playing, whatever, whatever. Well, then I crack into those peanuts, and when he hears it, he caught it. He seen, he, he, you know, he heard something open up, and he, he looked at that. He looked at me, and he looked at that jar, Man, yeah, buddy, I want some peanuts. He had a drawl, y'all. If you didn't know him when he was that little, he had a drawl on him that was as southern as southern can get. I know I'm not doing it right, but I mean, it just had a, it, you could listen to him talk all day. And so I believe it was at that point of meeting Bradley and I believe this is the same for everyone that knows him. But to know him was to love him. There was something about him that you just, you, you couldn't help but just, you just wanted to love him. And, and even, you know, from that young age on up until where we are now, it was the same. Whether you just met him or whether you ran across him at Walmart. To know him was just to love him. He had a given heart. He would stop 
life. Literally, he will stop life if you say, Bradley, could you help me? And he did not hesitate. He never once stopped to ask why. He never once questioned your motives. He never once, there was never anything in that nature. He just, okay. Now to me, now that is the epitome of a servant. As Christ says that we're supposed to be to each other. You know, the Bible tells us that we're to esteem others higher than ourselves. Bradley, Bradley lived that example. He didn't care who you were. He didn't care your background. He didn't care what was going on with you. If you said, Bradley, I need, he said, okay. Every single time. He had a love for, for people, which I think he thought it was just the best way he knew how. But I believe, I believe with all that I am, that it was an actual love of Christ that he was pouring out on others. Because I believe from stories and things that I've heard from the family from years back that he has accepted the Lord into his life and that he was a Savior. I have full confidence of where he's at. There's no doubt in my mind. And I know that there's coming a day. Glory to God. There is coming a day. I'm going to see him again. As well as others that in my family that have gone on before me. But when you think of Bradley. And we will. There'll be times. Sometimes when it's quiet. Sometimes when we're busy. In conversation. Different places that will bring back memories about where. Bradley was, what he's done, where he's been. Remember, remember his love and the way that he helped people. I believe that's how he loved people was the way he helped and the way that he wanted to help, to serve, and to do for others before he would do for himself. I encourage you with that. Anytime you think of Bradley, it's just love.
Dan was talking, I seen the family shedding the tears, smiling all at the same time. Well, that's a good sign. When you can smile during this dark time, and uh, it's okay to shed tears. That's what God gave us during uh, times of sadness to help get rid of some of the stress. And in April, as I told you, funeral home, wish we could met under better circumstances. To all the family, my heart goes out to you. This is my third funeral this year. I lost my mother in February. Then I lost an 11-year-old family member in February. So I can feel some of you sad. But God, as David said, talked about Bradley's love. Well, I want to talk about God's love for just a minute. There's a Christian hymn in the hymn book, most hymn books. It was written by Horatio Spafford. He is a man that lived in Chicago, and he lost all of his daughters at one time in the Atlantic Ocean ship went down. And so he was still in Chicago, so he got on the next ship going to England because his wife survived. And so he was going to England to meet her. And so he told the captain of the ship, he said, if you could show me where my daughters went down at. He said, well, we'll send somebody down to your room, come and get you and show you. So after a while, one of the porters came and come to him and said, let's go up top. The captain's going to show you where your daughters went down. And as he stood there on the edge of the ship, this song came to him, the hymn. It is well with my soul. It says, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. And I pray that you'll be able to say that in the days to come, that it is well with my soul, because it comes knowing God's love, even during a very uh, stressful or tribulation time. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, he said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? He said, Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul was talking about the astounding love of God. That God's <clears throat> love is overwhelming. It's the simplest truth in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. It talks about the love of God. And that's what we've got to realize. It's the love of God that helps us through times of sorrow. It's the love of God that helps us through distress and all those things. One poet wrote this poem, The love of God is greater far than tongue nor pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest place. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong it shall forever endure the saints, the saints and angels' song. One thing that we can be assured of through the reassurance of the scripture is the love of God and the expression of the love of God can be seen nowhere greater than at the cross at Calvary. Because Emmanuel, God with us, he went through everything that we ever go through. Whether it's physical pain, emotional pain, pain of rejection, Whatever pain it is, he went through it hanging on that cross, and that's God's demonstration 
that he loves us. Most of the world today don't even grasp that. They don't even want to hear about it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to accept the love of God. But the love of God can only be found at the cross. And that's what we've got to realize. In your sorrow, don't forget God's love. Now Paul named some things here. He said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And after he asked the question, who, then he makes the statements, shall tribulation. Now when we think about tribulation, that just simply means trouble or suffering. And you're definitely going through trouble and suffering <coughs> through the loss of a loved one. But Paul reassures us that this don't even separate us from the love of God. Now there's something like this. Satan wants to make you doubt the love of God. But the love of God is real even during our tribulation. Then he talks about distress. Well, when you think about that word alone, it means extreme sorrow and pain. And I know you're going through extreme sorrow and pain. And that extreme sorrow and pain can even affect the way we think or even the way that we feel. And Paul knew that. And that's why he gave us these words. Jesus knew that. God knew that. And that's why under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God gave us these words that the extreme sorrow that we feel, the sadness, the helplessness, the hopelessness that we feel, that the love of God is still real. Sometimes something like this makes us unsure of our faith. But we've got to remember faith, hope, and love are the greatest of these is love. And the more we know God's love and feel God's love, the stronger our faith is. Sometimes during distress, we just want to pull away from others. But don't do that. Look at this large crowd today. This is an amazing crowd friends and family coming together during a time of distress. So let that love continue to flow in the days of the days to come. Might feel depressed and anxious. Makes us sometimes hard to cope with life when we go through something like this. But remember, the love of God is still there although we feel like we can't cope. And you think about those that was around here in the first century church. They knew the love of God. They walked with Jesus. And sometimes they didn't understand Jesus. But Jesus said, don't worry. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I am, you shall be also. But those that heard these words, they went through some distress in their life. You think about Peter, he was crucified. Philip was crucified. James was crucified. Andrew, James, and Simon, Matt, Matthias, and James, they were stoned. Bartholomew was beheaded. And John was exiled. And through all of that, they knew the love of God. Because they was willing to lay their life down for others to hear the gospel. That's how much they knew the love of God and went through so much uh, distress in their life. Paul even said nakedness or famine. So poor you don't have food and so poor you can't even buy clothes. Those things can't even separate us from the love of God. Some of us today, we don't even understand that, but people in other parts of the world... They understand that verse. They don't know where the next meal is coming from. They don't know where their clothes is coming from. He says, peril. A lot of danger and risk. I'm not no hero. I served in the Army with the Second <coughs> Airborne, but I know some heroes. And they went through a lot of danger and risk for our country where we can have freedom. Well, that's what Jesus did for us to show his love. He gave his life for us. He, he did it all. 
even the sword, he said, wars and murders can't even separate us from the love of God. So in other words, God's love is all surrounding and it's abounding. Now in these verses, Paul goes on to say something that's very profound. In that verse 37, he said, Nay, and all these things, after he listed all those things, he says this, We are more than conquerors. There's one thing that a lot of brave soldiers say. Don't let the hard things stop you. There's always something hard in our life that comes. But don't let those hard things stop you. Keep following God. Keep following His Word. Because He says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Not in our own strength are we conquerors, but through His love, through Him, through Jesus Christ. See, if somebody without Christ, they are not a conqueror. You say, what do you mean conquer? It means a overcoming. The Greek word for conquer is machios or nikios. It's where we get the modern English word Nike. Next time you see a Nike emblem, that little swish, it means conquer. And remember, through Christ, we are more than conquer. And if you don't know Christ, Christ wants to know you. And it's up to you if you want to get to know Him. And then once you get to know Him by being born again, confessing that you're a sinner and you need a Savior, and believe that His blood cleanses you from sin, then you are a conqueror. And these things right here, they might hit us. The hard days might hit us. But we know in our heart, we know in our mind, that we're going to conquer this hard thing. Not on our own, but through the love of God. And we've got to just keep walking by faith and not by sight. See, what we've got to realize, we have victory over sin. We have victory over sin through Jesus' death. Some people quit a bad habit. I didn't quit bad habits. I overcame those bad habits. I abused alcohol. I abused, abused drugs. But through Christ, I overcame them. And that's what Christ gives us the ability to conquer those things, those demons in our life. Through in suffering, we have his presence. And knowing that he promised, I will never leave you or forsake you. No matter what hard thing I'm going through, I know that Jesus is there with me through the power of the Holy Spirit. And death. I like what Paul says to Corinthians. Now you've got to remember who Paul was. If you don't know who Paul was, let me tell you. Before he came to Christ on the Damascus Road, he used to kill half Christians. Kill. We use the modern day terrorists. If you believed in Christ, he was there when Stephen was stoned to death. He didn't want the gospel to go forward. Jesus met him and said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Paul, Saul became Paul. And God used him to write half the New Testament. And through Paul, Paul was writing to the Corinthians, and he was so confident. He said, death, where is your sting? But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory. This hard thing, remember, you can have the victory over it. Through God's love, through God's grace, and through God's mercy. I know his love is real, and I hope you can know that God's love is real because he loves us more than we even love ourselves. 
You know a dad's love. You know a mother's love. How deep that love is. For God's love for you is even deeper. As a friend, as a brother, sister, cousin, aunt, uncle, God's love for you is deeper. And that's the confidence that we can have, knowing that I'm a confident through the one that loved me and died for me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly bow before you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all your blessings that you give us, dear Heavenly Father. And Lord, we lift up this family to you again, dear Lord. We pray, Father, through the power of your Holy Spirit, that each day forward gets easier for them, Father. That they can feel your peace, comfort of the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, that comes through that relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that the friends and family that's gathered here, Lord, as they'll encourage one another, dear Heavenly Father, and we as a church encourage as well. Lord, as the family goes down for a meal here in a few minutes, we pray that you'll bless that food. And we thank you for it, Father. And Lord, may we go out today and encourage someone else and tell them about Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.